Uh, so Dr. Sears, today we're gonna talk a little bit about lean body mass, how to gain it, and what makes you lose it. So my first question for you, because um, it's not as easy as you think in terms of the simplicity, is what really is the difference between lean body mass and muscle mass? Well, first of all, when you talk about weight, uh, you're talking about the only two things we can actually measure is the amount of fat you have and everything else. The everything else is called lean body mass. That includes your muscles, your organs, the water retained by them, your bone, things of this sort. So those are the only two things we can distinguish. So we have to make a distinguish between muscle mass and lean body mass. And what would cause somebody to lose their muscle mass? Like, what are some reasons? Usually the primary reason we lose muscle mass is really age. Age and lack of exercise. Uh, the body basically is always making new protein, but the first crack who gets that new protein is not your muscles, but your organs. The last thing you want to do is have your organs fail and say, but I'm strong. That makes no sense. So anything left over, you can build muscle. Now, how do you know if you have muscle going up or down? Well, you can't just look at the size because that could be just retained water. So it, it really our primary tool of seeing how strong you are is what is called hand grip strength. You pull on a certain amount and the amount of pressure you can apply is really how strong you are. Now, why is that important? Because the higher your hand grip strength, the longer you live. Lo losing hand grip strength means you're losing muscle mass and it also means you're moving toward frailty the primary cause of acceleration of aging. Well, and the nice thing about that is it's something that you can do at home. You don't have to go to a doctor's office. You can really tell if you're losing your strength or not, which is nice. Well, exactly. And again, this is part of the whole aspect saying, how do I know if I'm well? One, you're not fat. Two, you have muscle strength. Those are your two primary uh, requirements of wellness that you can measure easily at home. So if somebody thinks they're in the category of losing muscle mass, what are your recommendations to help gain it back? Well, I said earlier that you have to have protein at every meal because basically it goes to the liver and the liver basically is acting like the dealer at the casino, passing out protein to the different organs and saying, are you guys happy? And if there's any protein left over at that meal, then the rest goes to the muscle. However, that will not build muscle extra protein for the muscle is only useful if you're stressing the muscle at the same time. So Dr. Sears, you said that protein is one of the most important things that you can consume to gain your strength back. How much protein are we talking? Well, there's two reasons for the amount of protein you need at a meal. One is to stop hunger. And if, how much do you need? It turns out it's about 30 grams of protein regardless of your sex or your age because that's the amount of protein if they can interact with the receptors in the gut that send signals to the brain saying, stop eating. That's the best way to lose excess fat, not be hungry. Now, building muscle mass says, I might need a little more protein, but only if I'm exercising. Now, what's a little more protein? If you're eating, let's say 30 grams of protein, which is about four ounces of chicken breast or about the amount you can put on the palm of your hand, you might want to add another ounce. That isn't very much. But again, that ounce of extra protein can be used by the muscles, but only if you're exercising the muscles. So the time you're looking to get that protein is really right after you exercise. So if you're going to eat protein in the morning and not exercise, stick with the 30 grams. If you're going to exercise in the afternoon, have a meal that might have 35, maybe even 40 grams of protein for dinner, because now you've done the stress that causes the muscles to grow if they have adequate protein at that point in time to use it. So are you moving a little bit away from like the protein within the 15 to 20 minute window right after exercise? So as long as you're consuming a little bit more? After well, it's really, a two, it's really a two hour window. Once you stop okay. exercising, obviously it's very hard to eat protein while you're exercising. Uh, however, there are several windows. There's a small window, about 15 minutes right after exercise, you want a little protein to basically help stimulate the release of growth hormone 
from the pituitary gland. But it's really that two hour window after exercise, you wanna get that extra protein into the body to basically stimulate the muscle cells have been stimulated by the exercise and now they can use this new protein to build new muscle mass. And how does this fit within what you've always talked about with the zone, with the, the, the amount coming from protein, carbohydrate, and fat? Are you still balancing this 30 grams with the carbohydrates and the fat? The answer is yes. The fact is what you're looking at, all muscle growth is predicated on hormonal control. And that's a dynamic balance based on the incoming aspects of how much protein, how much carbohydrate, and the type of carbohydrate, and a dash of fat. So you're using this, use that same format, whether you're looking to lose weight or to build muscle mass. That doesn't change. So just because you talked about weight, where is some of the stuff that you've talked about recently is with these weight loss injectable drugs and muscle mass. How does that all fit into this? Well, the injectable drugs, uh, the things like uh, Open, uh, Opensic or Wugovi, what they do, they stop hunger. That's good, except they stop all hunger. So you're not eating anything, including protein. This is why the clinical data is so disturbing. The people who are on these drugs, injectable weight loss drugs for long periods of time, they do lose weight. But about 40% of the weight is lean body mass. Your worst nightmare, besides all the other side effects that come with these injectable drugs. The holy grail is to really say, can I lose fat and gain muscle? And that requires now that balance of protein, carbohydrate, and fat at every meal to basically elicit both of those goals to lose fat and gain muscle mass. So if someone still wanted to use these weight loss drugs, the injectable drugs, if they just bumped up the protein, would that help solve it? Even though I know there's a slew of side effects that go with taking these medications. Well, if they tried to, they'd get nausea because one of the side effects of these weight loss drugs, they paralyze the movement of food through the stomach and through the small intestine. So as you try to put more food in the stomach and it's already full, you get nausea or you tend to vomit it out. And so these are so <laughs> saying, be careful what you wish for. So again, we go back to saying, ideally, if I can control my metabolism, I can basically at each meal, either focus on weight loss. That is basically I'm satiated, I'm not hungry, so I'm not eating as many calories, or at the meals right after exercise, add a little more protein, same balance of protein, carbohydrate, and fat to gain muscle. Excellent. So, and then the other group of consumers we get is, or we get athletes who are always looking to, to put on lean body mass, but not put on weight. So, you know, flipping this, what, what do you recommend for individuals that just want to gain lean body mass, but not have the fat come with it? Well, this is why when I did my first testing the zone, the people I used were world-class athletes, not athletes, world-class athletes. So again, this is why we basically developed this whole staging art that they would have two meals a day, a little more protein than they normally eat to lose weight, but enough to basically stimulate muscle mass. What if you eat too much protein? Actually, it's now muscle mass stimulation stops. There's a zone, a zone of extra protein that can stimulate the muscle mass formation. And then for anybody that's concerned that they're losing muscle mass, I know you talked about hand grip strength. Are there any other tests that you can do to tell whether you're gaining or, or losing muscle mass? Anything that you think has been clinically shown to prove this? Well, again, the, the only way to really determine if you're losing strength and muscle mass is really a, what is called a, a hand strength. It basically, it's sort of a $20 machine you can do at home and squeeze it, and it'll tell you how strong your grip is. So that's your most precise aspect. Now, obviously, if you're working out of weights, if you're basically can do less weight, you're probably losing strength. But the size of the muscle is not indicative of how strong you are. The size of the muscle, which is 80% water, is a measure of how hydrated it is. So when you had the old Hans and Franz on Saturday Night Live saying, we want to pump you up. Well, the easiest way is to basically get more retained water and say, wow, look at my muscles. They're big. Yeah, they're big because they're overly hydrated, but they're not stronger. Okay. So if I'm hearing you correct, it's about 30 grams of protein at each meal, 35 if you're doing exercise, but you really need the combination of the exercise for the stressing of the muscle and the protein to get adequate amounts to- You're right. If it's easy, everyone could do it. Yeah. 
don't know if that makes sense. 